Today I'm going to talk about the traveling sales company. Everything began back in 1832 when an actual traveling salesman brought in about his profession. And he pointed out that the very important thing is to plan carefully before you set off for a business trip. Because if you do so, you can save a lot of time and also cut down on the costs. Uh, unfortunately, if you don't know his name, he uh, cited his book as just one old traveling salesman. <laughs> and it also thus the name of the traveling salesman problem, excuse me, traveling salesman problem, which is about finding the shortest possible route between a given set of cities. Uh, mathematicians started to look at the problem a little bit in the mid-19th century, but it really set off in the 1930s when professors at Harvard and also at the University of Vienna started to actually work on the problem. Um, after a while, it sort of best settled within the graph theory, and the graph theory is about visual representation of mathematical problems using graphs, and the graph is a set of vertices by edges, so in other words, we have some dots and lines connecting them. And um, I would like to point out that the degree of a vertex is the number of edges which are connected to it. So, for example, this vertex is degree 3, and this one is disconnected it has a degree 0. Um, and that's how we can represent the traveling salesman problem using a graph. We have four cities which are assigned to four vertices, and then edges connecting them uh, hold the values of the distances. Um, so what's so hard about it? We can simply add distances, for example, here across the A to B to C to D back to A, add those distances, and then check all the possibilities. So the only advanced math we really need is to know how to add and then compare numbers. Well, but then we run into problems. It's just a matter of the number of combinations. With five cities, we end up with 120, with 25 cities with that nice blue number, and with 100 cities, we end up with that red monster, and if I want to actually name that thing, please do. <laughs> um, but to believe in modern times, we have computers that can uh, perform many, many calculations every second. So let's assume that we have a supercomputer, and we use it to uh, solve a 25 city problem. Uh, so we'll assume that our supercomputer can solve a billion check a billion of possibilities every second. So after a minute we have 60 billion, after an hour, a day, we have many, many more. After a year, we end up with also a very nice number. And after a thousand years, we're right there. Um, so what should we do then? Well, some people point out that the best way within the age of computers is just to sell on eBay. But that's not a very good <laughs> approach. That's what we want, but it's more about overpowering problems, overpowering frustration. Um, so let's move on to possible solutions. Turns out that the most powerful tool to use is human brain. Uh, if any of you would be given a piece of paper with just dots on it and be asked to connect those with lines trying to find optimal route between those cities, well, the results would be very, very nice actually. <laughs> Even some in your olds can do pretty well, and then once the brain develops, adults can approach uh, the open solution within 3%, uh, which is quite well. And psychologists point out, point out that actually uh, we appreciate aesthetics, and if we draw a nice um, tour, we just notice that it probably is quite optimal. Um, one of the ob interesting observations that emerged from it uh, from drawing lines and, and drawing graphs trying to solve the problem is that lines and roads should not cross. Um, we can put it with two triangles, so we know that at least in our dimension, if we have a triangle, its two sides, the sum of them should be longer than the sum of its base. So if we take two, uh, four sides of triangles, sum them, they have to be longer than two bases. Um, a nice tool that we have available is the estimation of the lower bound. So, in other words, well, how do we know that we get an optimal solution? We have a certain number that, that will tell us, okay, at this point, that's pretty much what your distance should be after we come up with a possible solution. Uh, for that, we use based on trees, and trees just like a tree, we have a trunk, branches, once branches go to the sides, 
they don't close, so the graph has no cycles. Well, what Mr. Help and Mr. Carr pointed out, if we start with a minimum tree, so where all the connections that exist are as short as possible, um, and then we close one cycle, once we uh, build that cycle and expand it, as you can see from the two pictures, um, and expand further, we may end up with a number that's either optimal solution or only a couple of percent below. Um, then we move to methods. First one is end of moves. So in this case, we come up with a random uh, tour within all our cities, and then we place n edges, n edges, for example, five, n, and try to replace them with um, alter alternative solution that hopefully will be shorter. For cutting planes, we take a graph, we identify areas where cities are close together, then we divide and try to solve smaller cases um, where we don't have as many possibilities, and then we combine everything together. It was developed by Mr. Martin Virgil, and uh, here is his enjoying of one of the examples. <coughs> then we have geometric approach, I'm not going to go into too many details. Uh, in here, just to show you that not only graph theory can be used. Then we move to algorithms, that's what I mainly focused my work on. So basically an algorithm is a specific set of um, rules which we can use step by step to try to solve the math problem. Um, probably the most famous algorithm we know is really algorithm. And for this algorithm, we'll start by sorting edges, the connections between cities. We make a list starting with the short connections, and then we end up with the long ones. And then uh, by choosing short connections, we hope to find optimal, optimal route. And actually, that algorithm on average turns out to be about 40% over the optimal solution. Um, there are two limitations uh, that we have to be very careful about. Uh, no vertex can exceed degree two, so there can be only one road going into the city and one road leaving the city. And also, we cannot close short cycles, meaning we cannot have a tour of, for example, three cities instead of including all the cities of the example. And here's how, how it works. First of all, we, do, we take the shortest edge, um, which is 10, then the next shortest edge is 20, we can use 30 and 40 because they connect it to city A, which already has two roads connected to it. Then edge 50 is used. Um, I'm not sure well to see that. Then edge 60 again would increase um, degree of C too much. Um, eventually, for the same reason, you can use, use edge 70, edge 80 would close a short cycle. So then we end up with choosing at 19 edge 100. And that's about 12.5% over the optimal solution. I'd like to point out that for that particular example, the sort of geometric um, representation of, of the graph, in this case we have edge 20 that's longer than edge 100, at 100, so we don't have to worry about crossing lines. Because if we would actually like to draw that perfectly well with corresponding to a real life example, uh, then we have a set of research algorithms, so we just start with random city, which is first city, and then we insert the leftover free. I call them free cities, so cities that are not included in our tour yet. For cheap insertion, we use we had cities that will result in temporarily in the minimal increase of the route. Then nearest insertion just pick closest city, furthest furthest city, and random. Um, we just pick whatever we like, and actually random uh, insertion turns out to be the best of pointing out the developments of the problem. Then we have nearest neighbor algorithms, so we start with a city, we go to its nearest neighbor. Uh, the difference between the nearest neighbor and double into nearest neighbor is that the nearest neighbor will just go to next cities and we start from there choosing the next city. Uh, in double ended we look at both ends of our uh, part of the route and from those two end cities we go to whatever is closer to one of those. And that's how the tours would look like for nearest neighbor and Dublin nearest neighbor. Both distances 270, the optimal 240. Then we have angle selection, that's again a little bit of geometry. Um, once we try to insert a city, we have to split an edge, and then when we uh, split an edge resulting in, in an angle that's very close to 180 degree, we have a really short connection. Uh, two short edges and once um, 
the, the angle is about 60 degrees, then our new edges are very long. And then the heavy edge and degree hand algorithm. This one is actually mine. Um, and I decided to take a completely different approach. I focus on the numbers of collections to all the cities, look at the degrees, and then I'll choose longest edge connected to a city that holds or shares the highest degree within the graph, and then I remove the longest collection. Uh, the estimation is on average by examples I, I tested. I, I'm guessing really that it, it's on average about 6% over the lower bound. Um, so that's how it works. First of all, we, ident we identify um, degrees of all the various cities. We keep a complete graph where all pairs of cities are connected. And then we remove the longest edge as long as it's connected to a city that holds like, the highest degree. So first of all, we remove edge 100. Then the next edge to remove is edge 90. On one end, it's still connected to the various of degree 4, which at that point is still the highest degree, so we can remove it. Further, we uh, look at edge 80, but that's that between two edges of degree 3, and we still have two cities with degree 4, so we have to discard edge 80. So the next one eliminates edge 70, following that edge 30 has to go, and then eventually we need edge 90. And that actually, for this example, the solution we get actually turns out to be uh, here's more blue lab example. This might probably about already 15 minutes into the presentation. Please bear with me for extra couple of minutes. Um, here we have a density problem which I decided to draw, and well, let's start. We, we choose the longest edge, we eliminate and follow the rules I mentioned. We we're getting rid of all uh, connections. At one point, we run into a small difficulty. We have two edges which have length 93. They're both on one end connected to cities that hold degree 9, which at this point is the highest degree. So in this case, to decide which one we want to remove, we have to look at the other end of our edges. And the edge connecting Boston to Hartford, 93, and Bridgewater to Greenfield, also 93. We look at the degrees of Greenfield are Hartford turns out to have the higher degrees so we eliminate the edge connecting carbon to positive. So then we keep eliminating our edges. And the block point, hardware has already degree two, so we know that because it has to have one over going in, one over going out, we have to keep, keep both edges 57 and 24. What's happening in the following step? We can notice that this edge, 34, can be speaking in Greenfield. If we would use it, it would close a short cycle, including only those three cities, uh, and we don't want it. So we have to get rid of this edge at this point. For the same reason, edge 42 has to go because we close a shorter cycle. Or again, that edge 36. Then we look at our degrees again and we eliminate our edges. At this point, Lowell has degree 2, Greenwood has degree 2. We know that those two edges have to stay. And Worcester, which still had close degree 5, um, well, has the, those extractive connections. Since we know that those uh, roads have to stay, we know that following that, we have to get rid of leftover connections to Worcester. And also, we have an edge that goes to short the cycle. So, in one step, we're getting rid of a lot of connections. And following that, we're in the gap with this. Total distance to 339 up to 118. That's 6.6% overall. That's actually how the solution should look like. And so what mathematicians do in cases like that, they try to combine with their own algorithms, trying to uh, come up with something that will provide us with a solution. Again, we can combine the head with two of the moves, so we remove those two edges that we don't want and then identify that alternative connections actually would move us to a optimal solution. So actually, what goes wrong in greedy and in head? Well, greedy algorithm, once, the problem is we don't always want to include the shortest edges. We want our overall tool to be as short as possible, but because we, first of all, we should focus on short edges, at one step, maybe forced to include a very, very long edge 
to spoil our solution. And similarly, CAD may force us to remove a very, very long connection, well, relatively long connection, that in turn will force us to remove a connection that's short and should be removed up the core. So why do we need all the hassle? Uh, 80 years of trying to figure out what to do with the bike. Well, we have numerous applications in the real life, for example, school bus routes um, or mail delivery routes. And that's how, that's how we use it. We cannot use eBay to treat that. So, do you have any questions?